All right, guys, we all knew this was coming. We are out in the field here with Raven, New Holland, and Swiderski equipment, and we are watching a autonomous tractor run a grain cart next to a combine. And I hope you guys really enjoy it. This is something I've been looking forward to for a long time. So let's get on in there and let's find out how this thing really works. Ben Cease, Manager of Customer Experience, Raven Industries. All right, Ben, let's talk about this Raven autonomy in, in New Holland uh, tractor we got out here today. Uh, the first thing I want to cover is how you set this up before you get out into the field and what are the procedures that need to be done and some of the safety aspects that you guys consider when you're doing that. Yeah, absolutely. So we do have a web uh, portal essentially that uh, we go into a field and we set up the field boundary uh, and we it's very simple we're just uh, dragging and dropping with our finger okay. right on the web portal um, that's really as simple as that and that what that does then is it it allows us to make sure that tractor is staying in a safe area yeah absolutely uh, we know that tractor cannot go outside that field boundary if it if it is approaching that field boundary it will stop so we always want to be in a very safe position sure um, and then uh, that tractor also has a very advanced perception system on there and uh, what that does is it, it, uh, it's got cameras on the front, it's got cameras on the side and on the back to make sure that if anybody's standing you know, in between the wheel wells or behind where the hitch pin mm -hmm. is, uh, when that tractor is ready to take off, it will do a safety check, make sure nobody's there. And if there's nobody, no one there, um, it will uh, commence its operation procedure. Sure. Uh, what it'll do, it'll take a dynamic path plan of where the combine is going to be, not where it's at now, and that's, what's the, that's the most powerful thing to see here, sure. is it will meet that combine right where it needs to be for that combine operator to then transfer that grain over mm -hmm. in a very, very consistent manner. Uh, we set that uh, spout up over the center of the, of the grain cart. It transfers that grain. If they want to uh, fill the front side of the grain cart, they really, all they have to do is hit a nudge button, either okay. front or back, and that can fill and top off that grain sure. cart. So it's a really simple situation and simple process. Uh, and you'll get to see that when you're inside the cab of the, okay. of the combine. Um, but it's, it's so simple. We've gotten a lot of feedback that, gosh, we love the simplicity of this system. And sure. we don't feel it's gonna take very long for us to adapt to this. And so it, the, is the combine operator controlling the tractor Yes. For the most part, you know, from a different display in the combine? Is yeah. Is that kind of who's under control of it? Yep. That's the beauty of this is all the control of that tractor and grain cart is is at the fingertips of the combine operator. Sure. So it's a very simple, it's actually a Windows-based uh, tablet that we use okay. for uh, controlling that. And you can see this in the screen back here that, we can, that we'll talk about. That's, that, that is very simple. We've had a lot of feedback. Uh, this is our second generation UI that okay. we're using here. And it's all based upon what customers liked, what they didn't like about the first generation. Okay. So we're taking that customer feedback and we're incorporating that right back into the product. That's awesome. And how many, how long has this been, been developed or being developed? Yeah, so this was uh, about four years in the making. Uh, Raven acquired a company called Smart Egg uh, back in 2019. And we've taken that technology, uh, we've essentially ravenized it. Okay. Uh, we've built on, on top of that a very good concept and uh, we get uh, to what we have today. Sure, and I've, you know, just watching it here, it's, it's running like flawlessly out there in the field with everyone standing around. So does it recognize objects that aren't, you know, does, can it recognize people and tractors yep, and combines? It, it sure does. You know, with we'll, those cameras? Yep, we'll see that on the, on the UI here because it's a live screen. Um, but it'll recognize people, it'll recognize pickups, it'll recognize, actually we, uh, uh, on, on accident, we, we saw it stop for a dog. Oh, that's We awesome. didn't train it to see a dog, but uh, um, we err on the side of safety sure. and the err side of caution because we want to make sure not only people are safe, but also assets are safe as well. Yep, and I think that's going to be a huge question, and I think you guys got that pretty well dialed right in, so. Yeah, and we're, we're always developing this technology. Mm -hmm. um, we're in a development phase where we're going to be over the next two years uh, prior to commercial release. Uh, but in 2024, we expect this to be out into a com uh, limited commercial release sure. environment, and we hope to get a, a ton more 
uh, customer feedback in the meantime, sure. but that will really help strengthen this product. Yeah, I, I would agree. And I also heard that it needs to calibrate the brakes every morning, right? Yep. Like, or yep. every time it operates. So it's very self-aware of you know simple dr driving functions, basically, yeah. right? I mean, so. When, when we start up every morning, we do we go through a calibration process mm -hmm. and it's not just the brakes it's the transmission sure. it's making sure we have the right gps signal it's all of this that makes this a rock solid product mm -hmm. along with making sure it's very safe yep and that's kind of what i was getting at the, sa the yep. safety aspect of it so you can't just willy-nilly jump in there and that's and, correct and go so the safety is the utmost priority so let's take a look at this these screens here so this is live right now out in the field Yep, this is our mobile command center, and this has been great for uh, events like this where we can take this and you can get the in-cab experience outside of the cab in more of a relaxed atmosphere. And you can educate a ton of people uh, in this environment, in this space, um, that you can't normally do in a cab because you can only get one person in the cab. So this is our live UI. You can see the, the combine here and the tractor here. He's just doing a syncing process right now. The tractor is taking a dynamic path plan um, to get to that combine. And what's great about this is the operator in the combine has complete control. He's actually pushing one single button for that tractor to do a sinking operation. And what's nice about this is if that tractor takes a dy dynamic path plan, and you can see it with the blue line, if that combine operator doesn't like that path plan, he can simply hit, you know what, I want to do that again, okay? If he sees an obstacle out there or a wet spot that he hasn't identified, he can simply do that again. In this case, we, we have pretty uh, um, large, wide open fields. So what he can do is he's sinking, he hits that sink button. Once that, uh, that, that sink is uh, in initiation, once that, and, and that tractor is synced, then he can actually nudge, you'll see here on this screen, that you'll see some arrows that he can nudge that tractor forward or back to top off his grain cart. Sure, sure. And it looks like you can see all the tractor functions also. Yep, you can. there are some diagnostics from the tractor as well as the combine over here. Um, and what's nice about this too is you see these, these two buttons over here, you can unload and you can stage. Now it doesn't auto unload, but what you can do is you can send this, say your truck is down here on the other, other end of the field. You can actually pull this unload um, icon, very simple, just like a, a geo um, sure. waypoint. You can pull this down here and you can say, oh, I want to send it to the truck. You just hit that button and it's similar to the syncing function. It takes a dynamic path plant all the way back down to where that's at. You can also use a staging point. So as you're working across the field, you want that cart to be really close to you. Sure. So he can move that staging point along with him so that tractor then goes back to the staging point because typically a combine has anywhere from 350 to 450 bushel hopper yep. and a green cart typically has a thousand bushel or even more than that. Mm -hmm. And so you can dump multiple times on that green cart but you don't want that combine stagnant. Right. When that combine is standing still, you're losing money. Time right. is money here. So question on the unload. So this you can t you can hit unload and it will take it to a truck and unload yep. itself. It will not unload itself. Okay. Um, at this point, we do anticipate when we, as further development mm -hmm. comes along, we will incorporate those features and sure. functionalities. Sure. Um, but we're we're really trying to focus on the basic operations of harvest, and once we get those down, we'll start incorporating those other f sure. features in there. Sure. So along with that, uh, you can tap unload; it'll go back to a staging area basically yep. near a truck and then an operator would then jump in and un unload exactly it. Okay. yep and typically simple. with the yeah. model that we and the market we have typically the either the green cart or the, i'm sorry the the truck operator yeah. will jump out he'll very simply hit a toggle switch okay. puts it in manual mode he can operate that tractor and then once he's done unloading he just flips that switch puts it back in autonomous mode and yep. the, then the combine <laughs> operator can call that tractor that over is again really neat really neat pretty seamless what you're seeing here is live feeds from the, both the tractor and the combine, and you can see the tractor is actually moving. This is the picture from the, 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 the tractor, and it's in the full sink right now. And you can see we've got two guys in the combine right now doing a live harvest, and you can see that here, but you can see the tractor actually moving fully autonomously with that combine. Yeah, that is really cool. 
All right. Thank you, Ben. I Thank really you. appreciate it. Absolutely. It's already been an amazing learning experience Good. for me. So, and I'm sure it's going to be for everybody else that has all these questions that I hopefully answered. So I don't know. Yeah. This is <laughs> this this is always it, it's always very uh, enjoyable for me to be here in events like yeah. this. You know, seeing this, I've seen it a hundred times sure. or more, <laughs> but it still gives me goosebumps to yeah. see that tractor coming up on that combine with nobody in the yeah, cab yeah. and that's the that's, that's the most cool. powerful part it of it. It really is so pretty awesome stuff so thanks again Ben. Absolutely. It. All right guys we're in the cab with Eric. Yes. From yep. Raven. That's correct. Okay yep. and he's going to kind of let us know how this all works like the actual functionality of this uh, the communication between the tractor and the combine and so on and so forth so give us a little rundown here um, of what we're looking at. All right so what we are looking at is a product called OmniDrive. Um, so we are in the cab of uh, the system currently right now. Um, so in the cab, what we actually have is we have a Windows tablet that will be mounted in the, t in the cab. We have a CR7 and then an e-stop. Uh, this e-stop here is just an emergency stop. So at any point, if you feel that it's unsafe, you just hit the button uh, and the tractor will come to a complete stop at that point. Um, this is powered on at all times and it does have a direct connection over radio to the tractor. Um, so if, for example, if this would go dead, say the batteries go dead in it, mm -hmm. you would not be able to operate the system. So sure. it always has to be on. Sure. Um, the CR7 that we have here, uh, we do start a job in this field computer. The main purpose of this field computer is just for coverage. Uh, so you will jump in the field, you'll hit this little button, this little icon, it turns green, uh, then it'll start mapping coverage. Once we have coverage on the CR7, it actually will be displayed down here on the tablet, the user interface. Um, so on the user interface, it is very simple to use. Um, it may be a little bit trickier to see with the sun being over there, but uh, what we actually have is we have three different commands that the system can do. So we have a stage point, unload point, and sync. Those are three commands that we can do. I'll zoom out here real quick so you can see this. So you do see the icons for the combine and the tractor. Um, and then we have these little icons that say S and U. So these are our, our, our actual stage and unload points. So if I would arm the system, say I wanna send it to this stage point, I would click play. What it's gonna do is it's automatically gonna generate a path to that stage point. So if I'm okay with that path, I would just hit play and it would actually go to that stage point. Uh, we also have this little other icon, it's an M. It's a midpoint. So what that midpoint purpose is, um, is to go through that midpoint before going to a stage or unload point. Um, a lot of guys will use that to get the tractor in the correct direction they want it to be. So in theory, the stage and unload points do the exact same purpose. They're just two GPS points um, out in the field that you want to send the tractor where it's currently to, um, to that point. We do distinguish them differently just because a lot of guys will put that unload point wherever their semis are going to sure. be at. So they can just keep that point there all day. Once uh, you do fill up the grain cart and it needs to go to the unload point, you'll just click unload and it'll actually go to the unload point sure. there. Just an observation here while you're explaining this to me, it seems really simple, user friendly. Yep, that wow. is correct. Yeah. Yep. yeah. So um, with the stage and unload points, since we are generating the path, it's just the most efficient path from point A to point B. Um, if you do have something out in your field, say a waterway, um, a pole, air well, anything like that, we can add internal boundaries. And so say for example, if I would add an internal boundary where that current path is, it would actually generate a path around it. So down here in the bottom hand corner, we do have an internal boundary there. Sure. Um, so for guys that have wet holes, waterways, anything like that, uh, we can go around it. So the next process, uh, we'll go ahead and disarm it real quick. Uh, the next command that we have, other than stage and unload, is the syncing process. So that's the process that we've been demonstrating here just um, now, but it's the process the tractor comes over to the combine and the combine can unload on through the tractor. So if I uh, hit this sync button, what it'll do is actually generate um, this little bullseye there. So that what that little bullseye is, is the actual interception point of where the tractor and the combine are gonna meet. Okay, cool. Yep, so you can move it up and down. That interception point is actually based off the current heading of the combine, the current speed of the combine, 
and then the current commanded speed of the tractor. And how is that communicating that information in real time? Is that a radio signal? Like it, a closed it, Yep, so it is a radio, channel, radio, radio it, signal? It is a radio signal, okay. so um, there's benefits of doing that. Mm -hmm. Um, one benefit is if guys don't have cell service, we don't have to worry yep. about cell connection <laughs> back and forth. Yep. Um, so you can run the system if locally through radio without a cell connection. Sure, sure. It's a reliable signal yep. with yeah, powerful radios, I would assume. So yep. And so there are multiple different um, safety systems, um, different hardware pieces. Uh, what we call them subsystems. Okay. Um, they communicate at all points through radio. Okay. So if one of them would go offline for, uh, for some reason, the system will not work. Sure, sure. Uh, so there is a heartbeat that runs through every single um, device on this system uh, to make sure everything's communicating at all times. Okay, sounds good. Yep. Okay, so let's get this thing running here. We're gonna do a dry run. Uh, the tractor's sitting over here to our left, and I'm assuming we're gonna do a, a dry run here, and the tractor's gonna come, and we're gonna we're gonna unload. So. Yep. So I just click sync. Uh, what actually happens on the tractor side is there is a horn that's actually on it. Uh, the horn will beep three times, and then there's about a two or three second delay before it actually takes off. Basically warning everyone. Hey, I'm about to move. Right. Um, so as it does approach um, on top of the cab, you can see that there is a beacon light that's up there. It's currently flashing an orange color. Um, it may be a little bit difficult in the sun to see that orange. Yeah. Um, but what that LED light actually does, there's three different colors. Um, it distinguishes what state the tractor is actually in. So there's a green color. The green color would represent that it's just in a normal state, just like how you bought the tractor. Uh, you manually drive it. If it's in a orange color, it means that it is in an autonomous mode. And then if it's flashing, that mean, means it's been commanded to move or is currently moving autonomously. Um, we talked about this e-stop here earlier. If I would click that e-stop, that light would actually turn red. So it's a, a really nice visual signal from for the operator of the combine yep, to let, let you know you know what's happening with the tractor. Yep. So and you basically have full control over that tractor at, that, at any given time. Yep, that's correct. Um, and also benefit for that is anyone that's approaching it, whether that's a truck driver, um, a family member that's coming out, they can know what hey what state the sure. tractor actually is in sure. currently. So on top of the tractor, we actually do have five different cameras. Um, so they are a little bit smaller, but if you can tell right beside where the actual lights that we had, there are black cameras there. Um, so those oh, yeah. black cameras, I'll go ahead and stop them real quick so we can take a good look at that. I'll pull up a little bit of that mirror. So those cameras there, there's one on each side, there's one in the back, and then there's two in the front. So the ones that are on the sides, the one in the back, and then the camera that's facing down in the front are what we call hazard cameras. Their main purpose is just to check the surroundings at all times while it's in autonomous mode. So if someone is uh, messing with the hydraulics in the back or messing with something on the side of the tractor, uh, the system actually will disarm on the UI and the guy, the combine operator will not be able to move the machine. So it's tracking those images all the time. Once a vehicle gets going um, into an autonomous mode and starts driving, so there's a forward facing camera, we get past that muffler, that actually looks out in front of it. So as it's driving, that camera is searching at all times for different objects. Also on that weight weight bracket on the very front there, we do also have a radar sensor. So the radar sensor and the camera both work in conjunction with each other so they can track different objects. One great example is this guy is actually driving a vehicle out here. Our radar system and camera would pick him up. What it would do is actually um, track his path. Uh, so we do do path planning or object detection is a better word for it. Sure. So it can actually know hey, he's not gonna go into my path, so I don't need to slow down. Sure. Um, he's actually going away from me at this speed. Okay. So we can detect objects and their paths that they're, they are currently on. Sure. So whether that um, mixes into our current path that we have selected mm -hmm. or not. Wow. Yep. So basically, in addition to the factory combine, you have what we had talked about earlier to control that tractor and then what we had just talked about there outfitted on the tractor yep that's so. that's correct okay. so um, currently that as it goes for the combine uh, 
the kit that actually comes from the combine is standalone. Okay. Um, so it doesn't necessarily have anything to do with the color of the combine. Sure. Uh, the only thing that we require is an RTK uh, correction service. Okay. As far as it goes for the tractor side, uh, currently, like we said, we are still in development. Uh, there's two different platforms that we actually have currently today. The T8 uh, tractor, the New Holland tractor you see yep. here, and then the Case Magnum sure. tractor. Okay. Uh, so both are front wheel assist tractors uh, that we have platform kits sure. for today. Awesome. So, and like you said earlier, all the communication uh, does come over radio. Uh, we also do have a couple other devices that are on there. We do have a perception controller that controls all the cameras, uh, the radar system, and then we do have uh, what we call an RS light, and that's basically okay. the brains of the operation. Sure. So that's sure. doing all the functionality. Awesome. So, yep. So autonomy is a little bit different than just normal auto steer in the <laughs> yep. world. Uh, you have to worry about controlling the propulsion system, the braking, sure. and then adding safety on top of that. Yep. And and Ben and I had touched on this, but the the amount you know it calibrates every morning or every time you're going to use it so this tractor doesn't just go out there and okay you have a brake problem it needs to know it needs to calibrate the brakes the transmission everything like that so yep. it knows that it's safely you know good to go for that day yep, so that's which correct. Is really neat really yep. really good idea so. so as you can tell actually in the tractor uh, we do have different user uh, UTs that are displayed on the Pro 700 here sorry about the glare. Oh yeah. So that is basically our standards for our propulsion system. Um, so whether it's the autonomous switch, brake calibration, uh, engine transmission, these are where you're going to see any faults that actually come up. Sure. So as you look around the tractor cab, there's actually not that much that you can see. Um, this camera up here is just for our shell only, so that's not even with the system. So as far as wires, uh, different modules, stuff like that, there's nothing really in here other than here in the back. So it's safety first. So um, there are different uh, protocols that, uh, for example, if the tractor does not get up to a commanded speed and a duration of time, uh, we will actually stop the tractor because sure. it's in an unsafe, unsafe situation. Yeah, so which brings up the question, let's just say a mechanical problem comes up where you have uh, low oil or transmissions malfunctioning, would the tractor then stop itself or would it give you a warning of some sort? Uh, so currently today, we're not doing that. That would probably be more into development. Yep. Um, now, if the tractor does throw a fault, uh, say like a transmission fault or an engine fault, then at that point, yes, yep. you would not be able to move the tractor. Right. Okay, yep. okay, sounds um, good. If it does get stuck in a wet hole, for example, um, and it can't get up to that commanded speed, it'll just stop where it's sure. at. Okay, yeah. awesome. So that there's is... some additional added uh, safety features that you don't really think about until you're out in the field and sure. you get to okay. a bad situation. <laughs> so. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Well, I really appreciate your time, Eric, and uh, thank you very much. I think this is extremely enlightening for everybody uh, in the whole A community. Yep, so. yeah, it's super interesting. And yeah. These are just baby <laughs> steps to yep. uh, to walking eventually further on. So. Right, right, so I appreciate your time. All right, we're here with uh, John Cooper from Swiderski. Uh, you guys put this Omni Drive on with Raven, this autonomy uh, demonstration. So can you tell us a little bit more about um, the Raven Omni Drive system? Yeah, that's correct. Um, yeah, so today we got the CR8090 combine out here with a uh, New Holland TA tractor outfitted with the Raven Omni Drive system. So basically we would take the uh, uh, the system from Raven and we install that in a tractor uh, with a brake controller and all the components in order to make that tractor go forward back and then make the turns and then we also all fit the rest of it with a uh, tablet in the combine and that tablet would control what we need that tractor to do. So when everything's all installed there's two radios on the roof that actually communicate back and forth. Once you sync the two pieces of equipment together from there you can make it drive wherever you want it to. You can have staging points, unload points. Once it's up next to you, you can make it go forward, backwards, left or right, depending on where you need that thing to be when you're unloading grain. Yeah, that's pretty awesome stuff. So let's talk about as a dealer, like, you know, this, this is something that's gonna eventually go commercial the way it sounds. Um, do you know what you guys would be doing, like uh, installing these and su providing support? Yeah, so I think, you know, this is the prototype now, and I would say two to three years down the road, this will be uh, probably integrated into the tractors coming off of the, uh, the line from the factory. Um, as dealers, basically set up. Set up of the components and linking them together and having, I would say, basically a service contract out in the field to make sure these things are always functioning sure. when we need them to function. 
Um, to me, this is the future of agriculture right here. I mean, um, technology is what is how you gain efficiency out in the field, and this is what's going to get us there. Yeah, I agree. Uh, this technology is, is really mind-blowing right now today, and I think having dealers like Swiderski with the support you guys provide is going to only take it to the next step, for in my opinion. So um, I will leave a link to these guys in uh, the description below. Uh, check them out, and I think, uh, yeah, this is some pretty cool stuff, and yeah. I appreciate you, your time, John. So, you bet. Thank you. Alright guys, thanks for watching. I look forward to seeing what comes out next from these guys. It's super exciting and I hope you learned a little bit. We'll see you next time.